Logie Baird's mechanical television system, with its rotating wheels and bright lights, has gone now, but the principles behind it still apply to today's electronic television. Let's start by looking at how the television signal is made up and demonstrate the effect of altering some of the parameters of the signal. The simplest method of transmitting light is to use a photocell and bulb combination like this. This is the photocell which changes its electrical resistance according to the amount of light falling on the face. The signal this device produces is amplified and used to drive this light bulb. Thus, if I shine a torch onto the photocell, the light comes on. And if I cover it up, the light goes off. If I now arrange for the lights from this studio to be focused onto the photocell with this lens, then the brilliance of the light bulb represents the average light intensity of the light in the studio. So if I walk across the set with a white coat on, the light bulb glows brighter. And if I put on a dark coat, the light bulb glows dimmer, as you can see. Clearly, this is not television, but if we could divide the picture up into very small sections and transmit the light intensity of each section, then perhaps we can create a picture at the receiving end. The usual method of doing this is to divide the picture into a series of horizontal strips, which is just like putting this mask in front of the picture. The light intensity of each strip from the left to the right is then transmitted. This process is called scanning. Logie Baird's rotating wheels used a process of vertical scanning like this. But today, it is done all electronically using electron beams in cathode ray tubes. Let's see how this process works. First of all, I'll use just five scans, or lines as they are known. As you can see, I appear as a set of vertical bars of varying intensity. Now let's try 30 lines, which was Baird's first broadcast standard. Now 200 lines, and finally 405 lines, which became the television standard for many years. As the number of scans increases, so the picture becomes more recognisable and the individual bars disappear. There is another aspect of the scanning process to be considered, and that's how fast it should occur. Clearly, the more scans occurring in each second, the more information that has to be transmitted, and thus the larger the bandwidth of the signal. But on the other hand, if I try to reduce the bandwidth by slowing down the scanning rate, just look at the effect. First, normal scanning rate. And now a reduced scanning rate. So the rate used is such that normal movement appears natural. The bandwidth of the signal also depends on the required horizontal resolution, since the higher the horizontal definition, the higher the signal frequencies. I can show you this in reverse, by reducing the bandwidth of the signal reaching your television. As I do so, the vertical edges of the picture become blurred, but the horizontal edges do not change because the number of line scans in the signal is not changing. Again, the resolution is chosen such as to give an acceptable picture and thus the bandwidth is minimized. I can show you on this oscilloscope what the signal from this scanning process looks like. This is known as the video signal. This instrument displays the amplitude of the signal, or in our case, the light intensity on the vertical scale, against time on the horizontal scale. The oscilloscope is showing the signal from each line of the picture you are seeing in the background. Notice how the amplitude of the signal varies with the picture content. Between each line scan, the video signal contains these special sections called line synchronizing pulses. These parts of the signal provide the synchronizing information so that the scanning processes in your television can be kept in step with the scanning in the camera. By increasing the time scale of the horizontal axis on the oscilloscope, I can show you here a special set of these synchronizing pulses which indicate the, the end of a complete scan of the picture. 
This set of pulses is known as the field synchronising interval and again it is used in your television to keep the scanning processes in step. I can also show you the signal in terms of its frequency spectrum. This device is called a spectrum analyzer and it shows frequency on the horizontal scale, each division representing one megahertz, and amplitude on the vertical scale. As you can see, the frequency components of the video signal extend up to about five megahertz. And we can see the FM carrier above the top, which is used to carry the sound signal. So far, we've only looked at the intensity of the light, which of course results in a black and white or monochrome picture. For colour, we need to provide not only light intensity, but colour or hue as well. Any colour can be produced by suitable combinations of red, green and blue. So, in a colour television camera, the picture is split using lenses and colour filters into its red component, its green component and its blue component. Each of these components is focused onto an ordinary monochrome camera tube and thus the three colour signals are produced. One of the important aspects of moving to a colour system from black and white is that it should be compatible. That's to say, black and white televisions must be able to display a good monochrome picture when fed with a colour signal, and colour televisions must be able to display monochrome pictures from a monochrome signal, such as we have just looked at. So, to preserve compatibility, suitable proportions of the three colour signals are added to produce a monochrome signal, and the colour information is contained in two colour difference signals. This is a test signal known as colour bars, and in set are the oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer displays of the colour bar signal. If I switch off the colour difference signals, we are left with a monochrome picture with shades of grey. If I now switch off this monochrome signal and switch on the colour difference signals, you can see what the colour information looks like. So that the colour information does not interfere with the monochrome signal, it is amplitude modulated onto a carrier located near the top of the frequency band of the video signal, as we saw in the spectrum analyzer display of the colour bar signal. Since this colour information is still in the video band, we can expect to get some interference effects, and the most noticeable of these occurs when the monochrome signal is interpreted in the television receiver as part of the colour information. This occurs when the picture contains a set of closely spaced vertical bars, such as this stripy jacket. As the camera pulls out from me, at a certain point, it, the video signal that the stripes produce are interpreted as colour information, and you will now see the jacket has changed colour to a sort of shimmering effect. This is known as cross colour. One excellent example of making full use of a transmission channel, in our case the television system, is teletext. Earlier, I showed you this oscilloscope trace of the field sync interval in the picture of the galloping horse. If you look closely at the lines after this interval, you can see a few scanned lines which contain no video information. These are lines above the top edge of the screen, and some of them are used to carry the teletext signal. Change the signal on the scope from our horse to the sort of signal you receive on your television at home, and you can see that teletext data. And this is the picture that gives that particular trace. By shifting it downwards, you can actually see the teletext data. The flashing dots contain a series of binary codes, which can be decoded in the right sort of set to provide the teletext display. In this case, the BBC's CFAX service. One of the most important aspects of the CFAX operation is its ability to provide a fast, up-to-date news service. Information comes in from the various national and international agencies and it's compiled by the CFAX news editor to create the Teletext news pages, in this case, new unemployment statistics. Within minutes, the new page is being transmitted the travel service broadcast on CFAX includes British Airways flight information, 
The relevant data is fed directly from the BA computer to the CFAX room, where it's quickly edited to the teletext format and put straight on to the page. As well as news and travel, teletext is ideal for broadcasting sports results. Perhaps when teletext usage is as universal as television viewing is today, there'll be no need to list the results during sports programmes. There'll just be a simple reference to a teletext page number. With that in mind, maybe, the CFAX sports service is already well established. The teletext system was originally designed for just that, the transmission of text. The block graphics of Tom Jones are achieved by processing the video signal from the camera pointing at the photograph. At the start, fine graphics weren't considered important for a text service. The alternative is to create the graphics at the keyboard, manually, and this actually produces some much more interesting displays. One other useful teletext service is telesoftware, the distribution of computer programs. And of course, those irritating little messages. The one important advance which we've started and which will go ahead getting more, more steam as time goes on, is linking other people's computers direct into ours. Automatic transfer of information, stock exchange prices, things of that sort. Um, then after that, I think the next thing is, will be, I hope at any rate, is more storage of pages in the set, in the receiver so that we get over this access time problem and people can get virtually instantaneous teletext as soon as you press the button, of course, it'll be recorded in the set, the page. And after that, I think the next thing after that is uh, big advances in telesoftware are about to come because you can send data as well as programs and that gives you an enormous thing, oh, far beyond my imagination, I think. And the other important thing is subtitling. And I think there's a big future in multi-language subtitling when the international satellites come along and are broadcasting over Europe and people in many different languages are going to want to receive them. And I think the only commercially viable way of getting over many languages is through subtitling in many languages. One of the major developments is in the digital representation of a video picture. This is done by dividing the picture up into little squares called pixels and representing the brightness and colour of each square by a number. These numbers can then be stored and processed by computers and other digital circuits to produce a whole range of effects. Unfortunately at present, communications technology has not developed sufficiently to enable the video signal to be transmitted cost effectively in this digital form, so it has to be converted back to its analogue form before transmission. Let's see how the digitization or quantization process works. First divide the screen into a series of large squares. Such large pixels do not give a recognisable picture, but if I gradually reduce the size and increase the number of squares, eventually the picture becomes clear and the individual squares disappear. Once the picture is in this digital form, it can easily be processed by computers and other digital devices to produce a whole range of effects. There are other developments which will soon have an impact on television, such as digital stereo sound, which is already being transmitted on a test basis from the Crystal Palace transmitter in London. And satellite broadcasting 
has spurred the development of a new method of processing and transmitting the video signal called the MAX system. MAX stands for Multiplexed Analog Components, and in essence, this system, although it still uses the analog video signal, transmits the monochrome and colour components of the signal separately. This means there are no interference effects between these two signals, and so the stripy jacket effect I demonstrated earlier would not occur. Also in this system, the sound is transmitted digitally, and the system is such that many sound channels can be incorporated to provide radio programs as well as multi-language television broadcasts. Teletext is also undergoing development, and recently the Department of Trade and Industry has published a World System Teletext specification. This specification contains the technical details on how a whole new range of features and facilities can be incorporated into the Teletext system. This is a prototype Teletext decoder which incorporates some of these new features. Since Teletext data to this specification is not at present being transmitted, here's a simple Teletext generator which has a few demonstration pages in it. This display shows some of the new facilities such as accented and supplementary characters. And this display shows new facilities such as double size and double width characters, full screen colours, and also redefinition of the colours. Pink, for example, is not one of the colours available with the current Teletext system. Recently, Teletext has started to be used commercially for the general distribution of data. In this application, the broadcasters act as a carrier of data, which is supplied by a third party. This is in its infancy at the moment, and there are still certain legal problems to be sorted out. But both the BBC and the IBA have such a service. Ladbrokes, the bookmakers, operate a sophisticated distribution system which ensures that all their hundreds of shops get the right racing information. As well as satellite channels and even old-fashioned telephone lines, they use Teletext to carry much of what the punters want. Still waiting on the second dog at Bristol. At On Yen, they are at the post. At the post at On Yen. And the show now coming from On Yen. At the headquarters control room, the information is edited, annotated, revoiced, and broadcast to the network of shops. On its own, Hackney. It's now at 4 to 1, Trap 5. When teletext is used, the information is fed to the television broadcaster, who carries it on the back of the normal video signal. And at the shop, the composite signal is received and decoded in the normal way. The displays available for each shop manager aren't just limited to the racing. And running, and off to quite a level break between traps three, four, and six. Then comes one, five, and two. At the first bend, and three's the leader. We have about a couple of lengths from four, then comes six, one, two, and five. Going down the far side, and three extends the lead. It's gone from three lengths clear from four in second, then comes six and one, and finally two and five. Down towards the second last bend, and three, some three lengths clear from four. He's trying hard to close the gap, then comes one. Two lengths back in third, then comes two, staying on well. Off the final bend, and three, some two lengths clear from four, he's closing all the time. Up towards the line, it's three by a length, at the line, trap three, the winner. Second, trap four. First, trap three, move along jewel. Second, trap four, easy pet. Three, beat four at Hackney. From where we're just waiting on the off time. It's remarkable how fast the data's transmitted, from racetrack to shop, via the headquarters operation. But of course, the environment it's used in isn't always as glamorous as the information technology itself. None of these displays looks at all like traditional teletext. In fact, a completely different display system and data format are used to bring the service to a standard that Ladbrokes require. Looking at the industry we're in, and the service we're trying to provide, it, it's not something that we want to uh, bamboozle customers with fancy graphics or uh, the, the definition or resolution of graphics. It's information delivery. We believe now we've got the system which will allow us to de deliver that information in a way which helps us to run the business more efficiently and also obviously that our customer finds acceptable. 
And it's five to one, the winner. Ten to one, the second. That's but whatever the style, one, it's fed through the accurate. teletext system. Another use for the broadcast television signal, which certainly wasn't anticipated when it all started. This is direct television from the studios at Alexander Palace. And now you're going to see and hear someone you know well. Miss Helen Mackay. 